Now, all right, I need to get back to where I was. Where was I? I don't know. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Sparrow here today, and well, I'm here today with uh, Thomas Medham and Mark Heider. Hello. Hello. And, um, and today we are going to be discussing. Hello, everyone. Whoa, whoa. Here what? Today and, well, I'm here today with uh, Thomas Medham and Mark Shut up. Hyder. Shut up, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs> that was. Okay, that was random. Oh. Okay. So today we are going to be discussing the ethics of narration and how to be a PonyTuber slash YouTuber. Which, yeah, this is going to be just a way for me to kind of connect with you guys. And some of you have asked me, you know, how do you be a good YouTuber? How do you do things right? Well, today we're going to be discussing that. Hello, anime cheese. Today we're going to be discussing that with uh, Mark and Thomas. Uh, they're just going to be adding in additional dialogue if it's needed. Seeing we've got quite a bit to cover. Um, where can I go? There it is. But what many of you are probably asking: the what are what do you mean by the ethics of narration? The ethics of narration, what I mean by that is pretty much that the steps to doing narration the right way. Not and not being, you know, like how I was when I first started narrating, pretty much. That's pretty much exactly how I can put it. Okay, let's make that a little smaller. All right, so there are six ethics of narration and how to be a good YouTuber. YouTubing, many people think that it's an easy job, but it's not. It's tough. No, and, it, not. and it does technically count as a job. This, uh, because for some, you get paid, and it's doing something that you enjoy, even though most are mo mainly things that you don't enjoy. <laughs> Most jobs are mainly things that you don't enjoy. So anyways, let's get started with this, uh, you know, panel, I guess you could say. I mean, at the moment, my channel has 42 subscribers. Yes, so so, so Thomas is one of is he can relate to this a lot. He's still kind of growing as a YouTuber and as the vlogger, as is Mark, if he wants to say something. Oh, so something. Well, it took me ages to get to one thousand subs. Yeah. But it's not until I got going into into ponyfied, it went up. It's because this random <laughs> so freaking huge. So I have no idea how long this is going to be, and I will try to, you know. When I say ask questions, guys, if you guys have any questions, do not be afraid to ask. Not be afraid. Not be afraid. So, let's talk about the ethics of narration and how to be a YouTuber. So, the first thing we're going to start off with is ethic number one. How do you know narration is your thing? And if you are sure that you want to be a narrator, what type of narrator would you want to be? Well, there's a simple answer to the first question. How do you know narration is your thing? Well, ask yourself this. How do you know you're good at something unless you try it? There's your answer. So the first answer, so the answer to the first thing is to just try it and go for it. It's, a, it's literally a shot in the dark because I didn't know I was going to be good at narration. I took a wild shot and yeah, it worked out pretty well. <laughs> Seeing I'm I sitting on. I uh, did my first video on, on, YouTube, on my channel. Seeing I'm now sitting at 1,260. So, yeah, it's, it's a shot in the dark, but that's pretty much the answer to the first thing. If you want to try narration, go for it. You don't know if you're going to be good at it unless you try it. Yeah. Then there's the second question, which is, if you know that you want to be a narrator, what type of narrator do you want to be? 
there are multiple types of narrators, if you do not know this. Um, there are simple narrators. These are the narrators that, like back in language arts, when you were listening to like an audio reading of a certain book, you would hear like the narrator doing impressions of the voices. There's no music, there's no nothing, just his voice, his slash her voice. That is the simple narrator. No music, no voice acting, no sound effects, just the audio of their voice with the voice impressions of the characters. Next up, we have the intermediate narrator, which is where I started for for like my first reading. This is the person who would include maybe music or maybe only sound effects or maybe just prefer voice acting or which would lead to the next one is a mixture which would be both mixed. So you have to kind of contemplate here. Would you want to be a simple narrator or would you want to be the intermediate narrator? Or would you want to be both? Me, I would fall into the both mixed category because I include music, I include sound effects, I include voice acting, I include my my voice. Of course, I'm the narrator. Duh. But when I first started out, when I first started out, it was a it was a story called Bittersweet Apple Lakers. And I thought that was the best damn thing to hit YouTube on my channel. And now I look at that thing and go, what the hell was I thinking? This is basically something you're going to do as a YouTuber. You're going to go back to your, like your first project. Oh, by the way, hello, Will Light. Uh, this is something you're going to look back on. You're going to look back at your old projects and go, oh, my shitty aunt. What the hell was I thinking? You know, because that's your first set of stuff. That was stuff that you started out with. It's what built your channel. To be honest, and hello, Kendra, wait, wait, as well. Because he's British. Yeah, and yeah. and because I don't live around country. Well, I like to do country accent, and I'm British too. So what? But you're you're more used to it. I'm, I'm more used to it. Yeah. And other narrators that would fall into the category of both mixed are people that you know that I admire very well. Uh, Lost, Scribbler, Goody, Webcake, every one of those people. They fall uh -huh. into the both mixed category. Well, maybe not so much uh, Webcake. Webcake's more in the intermediate category, seeing she normally doesn't add sound effects. She normally just uh, she normally just does like maybe music. I don't know. I really I've only looked at so many stuff on her channel, especially as an animator. Look at the oldest content. Exactly, animate cheese. Even as an animator, you look back at your old project and go, "What the fuck." But you gotta choose on what kind of narrator you want to be, or in this case, if you're a YouTuber, what you want to do. For Mark and uh, Thomas, it's vlogging. For me, it's reactions and reading. So, both good things that both things that I'm good at. Which to be a reactor, you really don't need to do much. You just need to be able to watch things. Which for me, Ponytail's Rare Rapunzel was almost impossible. Thoroughly. <laughs> so did I. But back to the subject. These are the important things that you need to ask yourself before even considering going into narration. Narration, it's tricky. It's a really tricky thing. And we'll get more into the more important stuff as we go along. But <clears throat> before you consider taking narration, you have to ask yourself, you know. What type of narrator would you want to be? Would you want to be simple? Would you want to be intermediate? Or would you want to be both? For me, I've worked myself into the both mixed category. Mark was more in the, I would guess, intermediate stage because he he didn't voice have any voice actors. He mainly was doing music. I don't know about sound effects. Uh, 
but he was doing the voices himself. He was adding music to make it creepy, which is a good thing. Uh, um, no, I didn't. I made it an intro. Yeah. Only music, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's the starting point. Yeah. So, those are important things you need to ask yourself, both as a narrator and as a YouTuber. You, I mean, you realize you don't know what you get, you're get. you getting into when you get into YouTube until and you see the people start to like your content. You're like, okay, and I want to upgrade. I want to make my channel better. That's where things get ridiculous. Like, for me, what Bittersweet Apple Lakers was, the first version, was just this one hour and 22 minute audio thing of dark music with me talking in a spooky voice. Boy, oh boy, do I... Oh. I'm like... I, I, I mean, I reread this thing, re listen to this thing. I'm like, there could have been a sound effect there. There could have been so much better there. You know, these are things you're going to simply look back on no matter what. You're going to go, that could have been better. That could have been better. That could have been so much better. But this is what helps you to improve as you go on YouTube, as you start. But the first thing you need to know when you join YouTube, when you start a YouTube channel, you have to have determination and patience because when you start YouTube, it's like starting anything new. You start from the ground and you have to work it up. You're going to start at zero subscribers and you have to create content to actually, you know, get to where you need to go. It's, it's tough. It, it's really tough. There's challenges and all that, that stuff, tough. but it's, it's hard. But times with determination, like but with determination and, pro and patience, you can make it on YouTube. It's something that takes time to work, because when you get on YouTube, you aren't like put into a filter where you suddenly become known that you just joined YouTube. You have to work your way up, and you have to be, and you have to, ex you have to show that you can do this. For me. When I started YouTube, it wasn't even to start a YouTube channel. I started YouTube making YouTube videos for funsies. I didn't make it for a certain reason, just for fun. But as a YouTuber, you have to be patient and you have to work your way up. It's tough, but you have to work your way past those challenges. As you've seen, there's been a lot on my end. Okay. Another thing that's very important that a lot of YouTubers think is something that needs to be addressed, even for narrators. They think they need like this professional grade setup. They need this the best setup that they can possibly get, a mic stand, an audio interface, every the best mic out there. This is a lie. People may say that you need professional stuff. You don't. What, what am I using right now? I'm using a HP laptop, and I'm using a blue snowball microphone. My God, Skype, shut up. God, people decide to get loud when I'm recording. When I'm re re yeah, whatever. The final word is that you don't need fancy equipment or professional gear in order to start a YouTube channel or to narrate and make it sound beautiful. That's what yeah, editing sorry. is for. Yeah, that's why I started with a bloody iPhone. <laughs> hey, it was a start. It was a start. Yeah. Things that you need uh, to at least get into YouTube. You need at least some some array of editing skills. You need to know how to edit, and you need editing software. Which for me, the audio, the best audio qual, uh, like the best audio editing software, is Audacity. Audacity, it's free, and it's awesome. Everything that you have ever heard from me came straight through Audacity. Well, except for like the little mini videos, like where I think Webcake and all that stuff, that was on my tablet because I was just too lazy. Also, hello, Blue Jay. I'm sorry. Um, but the final verdict is you don't need a fancy setup and you don't need professional gear in order to start a YouTube channel. You can start with simple things like microphones in, on a phone. You can do you, you can start with a tablet mic. You can start with a phone mic. Or 
for the, the case for me, it was a headset, which was a Logitech headset that cost $20 that I originally bought to just talk, talk in Skype calls, but then YouTube just aroused. Now, <clears throat> the, it was not the best mic, but it was a pretty damn good mic microphone for what it was. I'm not kidding. I really thought this thing was the best thing ever. I thought this was going to be my microphone until the end, until someone came on and told me, you know, it's horrible. <laughs> Pretty much. That's how it went. And hello, Mewtwo tour. Uh, it's all in all, it's up to the person who is making this. Do you want a professional setup? It's up to you. It's all in your budget. If you don't want to spend a shit ton of money, here are some microphones that you can get for cheap and under $100. You can get a Logitech headset. Now there's two. There's two. One costs more. The Logitech headset that I got was the one with the wires and oh my fucking god, it was a pain in the ass to assemble. Because the cord was like, oh, I don't know, like 10 miles long. So I had to really work around it, and I had to, I had to just put it to where I could use it without wires hanging everywhere. That was also a problem. But the lucky tickets that I got was twenty dollars, twenty dollars for a microphone that I thought was pretty damn good, and it actually was pretty good. Once I learned how to edit, then I then I realized I can make this thing sound professional. <laughs> Did it sound absolutely professional? No. No. Now that, now that I listen to the comparison to the new mic compared to the old mic, I'm like, oh my god. My subscribers were listening to that shit forever. Oh my god. But the cons with the Logitech headset, seeing your microphone is literally right by your mouth. Like it looks like a it look it looks like when you go to McDonald's and they're wearing those headsets. Can I take your order? <laughs> yes, it literally looks like that. That's what my parents said every time I wa they walked into my bedroom. You look like you're my you're working for uh, McDonald's, and I just kind of give them the middle finger and say, "Screw you." <laughs> <laughs> the cons with it are pretty much since it's so close to your mouth, you're gonna get pops, and to get and you can't just get a pop for a pop filter for a freaking headset microphone. If it's on like a blue microphone, sure, you can get a pop filter all you want. However, for something that hangs right down here by your mouth, you can't get a pop filter. Some say tube socks work. I disagree. I've tried it. It doesn't work. If anything, it makes the audio worse. Another thing that it catches very, very much, as you guys saw, um, what's that, yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, no, two days ago. As you saw two days ago, I was losing my mind because I had to edit out breath after breath after breath after breath after breath. Heavy breaths get caught a lot. And if you make a lot of mouth noises, dear God, they're going to get caught like crazy. Like if you make even the slightest sound in your mouth, like chewing or anything like that, it will get caught. Yeah, pretty much. Anything that sounds nasty, it will catch. Now, for certain... Yep, breath score. Now, there are... But the pros to it are that it has decent sound, and it's cheap. It's a very cheap microphone, but for what it is, it's actually got pretty good quality. So, if you're starting out and you want a cheap microphone, go for a Logitech headset. Now, you can go for the USB one, so it's an additional $20, but that's still cheap. Uh, the USB microphone requires charging because it links to a USB thing that goes into your computer. So no wires. That's the only difference. Um, you can get USB microphones that can be drained to computers, but you're always going to be tied to the wires. Yeah. And the next microphone is the one that I have that I'm going to recommend heavily. The Blue Snowball or Snowball Ice microphone. There are two differences. The Blue Snowball was the first model. The, the Blue Snowball Ice was the second model. That's what I've got. 
That's what you're hearing right now. Now, many people, no matter what, you're going to hear people say the blue microphone is the blue snowball microphone is bad. It's terrible. Don't buy it. I highly disagree because for something as simple as narration or talking in like live streams like this, this is a good microphone. This is an excellent microphone. Depending on what you're using it for, like if you're someone who's recording at, oh, I don't know, Pixar Studios or Disney, yeah, you're going to need something professional. That's a different scenario. For something that you're doing at home and for fun on YouTube, that is pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much all you need is a simple microphone. <laughs> when I first started YouTube, I never thought I'd get a single sub, and now I have 22. That doesn't seem like a lot, but have but that 22 living people who enjoy my content. Exactly. No matter where you start on YouTube, like when I started on YouTube, I didn't expect to even get one sub, to be honest. Not at all. <laughs> I remember my first subscriber. It was Ashley, the one that you hear in the live streams. She was my first subscriber. I remember very well that she was my first subscriber. Mark, I believe, was my second. <laughs> or third. <laughs> Somewhere around there. Nah, I had more back then. Enjoy my content. I've had a blue snowball for almost a year, but I didn't have the correct wire to use it. It didn't come with a wire? Huh, that's weird. Well, it depends on where you bought it from. <clears throat> if you bought it off of something like uh, eBay, yeah, it might not come with a wire. Yeah. But the wire that comes with the blue ice one, at least, I don't know if it comes with both, I like that it has the plastic coating around the wire so that you don't get kinks so hard. So that's a benefit with this microphone. It's a really good microphone. And it don't. It came with a wire, but I need an iPad adapter for it. Oh, you must have been recording through your iPad, not a, not a computer. Ah, uh, it, it, it's got the very, very... Oh, if you got a very new iPad, the old cables won't work, like the iPhone 4. Yeah. The adapters are... I, I don't know much about that. I've never used that. Yeah. It's known that, uh, uh, the new iPads and iPhones got known as lightning cable. <laughs> lightning my ass. Lightning. <laughs> but if you want to buy the blue snowball, this one only costs fifty-five dollars. That's what it costs for me, anyways, because I got like the two-year warranty and all that stuff. Ooh. The pros of it: great sound. It, a great sound. It's affordable, very affordable for someone who has a low budget. And the setup on it is so very easy. People stress so badly over a microphone because they think it's going to be so hard to install into their computer. If you get something along the lines of what Mark got, yeah, it's going to be hard to fucking set up. Because <laughs> he goes through an audio interface. This is a USB microphone. So USB microphones are easy. They don't require any... This one especially, it doesn't require any special shit to download when you plug it in. All you do is you plug the thing into the back, and then you plug the USB part into your computer, ready to go. Now... Uh, in my case, I was a dummy. I was a dummy wummy who, who thought it didn't work in my uh, PC because I put the fucking jack that goes into the back of the blue snowball. I put it upside down. And I had to actually look up a YouTube video to learn how to do that. It, it's a common mistake. So I'm not the only dumb idiot who did that. <laughs> Yes, the Blue Snowball is really good for gaming live streams. It's good for reading. It's good for anything. Mostly anything, that's what I'll say. But there is cons about this microphone as well. Um, it catches a lot of sound because it's a much better microphone. Technically, that's pretty much the... That's pretty much something you're going to get with a lot of microphones, is that it catches a lot of fucking sound. So... Yeah, laugh all you want. <laughs> like, I can be sitting in my room, and the freaking door in the front room can freaking shut, and it will catch it. That's how bad you're looking. And, so, and compu computer fans as well. Yes, very, very bad. Very, very bad. 
So a lot of sound. So if you have a soundproof room, you're good to go. If you don't have a soundproof room, you might have to do some audacity editing, which you can easily find on the internet. Just look up something that you want to learn on Audacity on YouTube, and it will teach you. Like noise reduction, that was a problem for me for a while. <laughs> another, con, another con about it is that it takes up some space. Depending on what stand you get with it, you can, you can always get new stands for it, as long as it you know screws in. This one takes up, I would guess, a radius of about maybe... God, I don't know maybe six to seven inches wide. Other than that, it you just need some space next to your PC, and I'm sure you can make space. So it does take up a lot of space. Now, the one con that I really don't like about this microphone is the fact that you have to be within like a foot of the microphone in order for it to not catch any room echo, or like a voice echo. You have to be like this close in order for it to catch your voice with no echoes. It, it, like the echo's not bad, bad, bad. It's just, it's just something you don't want in like you know, spe like a, a recording of like a story or something like that when narrating. So yeah, that's a really big con. But other than that, <laughs> it's a very good microphone. Those are the those are two. But can you move the, the microphone closer to you? Yes. Than leaning forward. No, it can it can come. I can scoot it closer to me in my in my case. Or for Mike, for Mar like something like Mark's uh, thing, he he just pulls it closer because he's got the mic stand. That's why I say if you don't want to break your budget. Well, the thing is, I just can turn up the gain if I'm. I can still push it back, and I still you can still hear me. Yeah, because it's a better quality microphone. Yeah. So, but in the end, it's your choice. If you want to go for something more expensive like the Blue Yeti, go ahead. The Blue Yeti is, I don't really know how to compare it. I've heard some sound difference. It sounds a little cleaner, I would say, but unless you have a soundproof room, which for me, that's not the case. There's a giant gaping hole right in my doorway. You're going to have issues. No matter what, if you have like an open sound, it's going to be a problem. So you might have to buy either, you might have to either make like a sound box or get the padding that you see in like every famous YouTuber's video that helps you suppress the sound. That is not expensive stuff at all. I think it's like $10 a roll or something like that. Or just make a sound box. Sound boxes are better <laughs> and they're cheaper. But in the end, but in the end it's completely your choice on what to do. Whatever you want to do, it's your choice. Do you want to go for a more expensive option? Do you want to go for an audio interface? We'll get to more on that later. But for now, if you have questions, please ask. If you want to ask any questions, feel free to type it in the chat. And if not, we'll move on to ethic number two. I need a drink of water anyways. Soundproof room equals closet. I have known some people who do actually work in their closets. Vanilla Swirl being one of them. Yeah. Is Harry Potter one of them? <laughs> wow. That was bad even for you. Thanks. Yup. <laughs> I think, come on! There was the most obvious jokes. I can't, I can't move into a closet. Or, I can't go to a closet and call the Mark doesn't have a closet. He literally lives in, like, a closet. <laughs> I stayed in a closet. For me, it's my computer desk. I, I, I do have a closet that I could use, but I'd have to take my PC in there, and I would have to take my microphone in there. Ugh. That's one thing I like about this thing. It's compa it, it, It's very easy to pack around. You don't have to take all these wires with you. They're actually pretty well wound up. Other than that, this is a pretty a pretty good microphone microphone that you can take anywhere you want to go. But since no one has questions, I am going to move on to ethic number two, which is when 
do you want when or do you even need to upgrade your equipment this is for when you later on get more subscribers yada 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 and you and you feel like you know you've got a good following going and you'll also ask yourself this do you want to upgrade that's the thing and or do you need to upgrade exactly this is something i asked myself when i got when I uh, was looking forward to getting a new microphone. And I kept getting comments from people like, get yeah, a mic with better quality or something like that. This was before I knew there was like this like filter going straight through the, the burps. <laughs> this was before I knew that there was like this open filter going straight through the microphone. Like someone going like straight into the microphone. But that's because it was just a cheap microphone. So, yeah, I learned that. And after looking at Chrysalis's revenge thing the other day, I'm like, oh my god, thank god I freaking upgraded. Because, dear lord almighty, that was a pain in the ass to actually edit. Not that, not only that, but the blue microphone sounds so much better. And... Yeah, this is, these are questions that you have to ask yourself. Do you want to upgrade? Do you need to upgrade? And if so, what do you want to upgrade? Do you want to upgrade your PC? Do you want to upgrade your microphone? Do you want to upgrade your chair? <laughs> In Scribbler's case, that was the case. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, and again, the answer, it's totally up to you. If you want to upgrade your PC... Well, that comes next. Before I, re I beg of anybody listening, before you upgrade anything, do your research. If you are going to get a new microphone and it's something cheap, you want to move on to something that has better sound quality and just sounds better. So do... And also, I will say, so know your budget as well. Yes, yeah. budgets. Yeah. So you want to be absolutely careful. You want to research things. You don't want to just go out and buy something. You don't just want to go out and buy something of a similar status or worse. Because then you just wasted your money on nothing and yeah, you're stuck. So doing your research, very, very important. That's exactly what you want to do before you go out and buy a new computer, a new microphone, a new chair, <laughs> uh, anything. Anything that you want to upgrade to, you want to do your research on. For me, I had to do a lot of a lot of research on microphones. Like I was going to originally get the Yeti, but I decided to try the blue, mic blue Snowball first. Because I've heard from some people it was good. I've heard from some people it's terrible. But it's all in the eyes of the person who's going to get it. Plus, it's cheaper. It's much cheaper. It's more affordable. Money for money. And much easier to find, I, I should say. Um, so if you're looking to upgrade something, do your freaking research first. But then there comes to this. Like if you're doing research and you come across a video that says, you know, don't buy this. It's shit. Don't always go off of what people say because I bought, I wanted the Nintendo 3DS for Christmas, God knows how many years ago. Uh, and people were saying that it was crap. It broke when you turn it on. Uh, people, I would love to take those people aside and say, I still have a working Nintendo 3DS. It works just fine. Take that. So don't, Always listen to other people's opinions, it, it, especially if they're telling you that you that for a professional crap you need to get an audio interface, you need to get the most expensive fucking thing. And also, some reviews are fake. Exactly, that's one thing you really gotta be careful about when doing research. Was it like the Nintendo Switch as well? Apparently, that was hated. Uh, the Nintendo 3DS, no. The Nintendo 3DS was just. 3D screen. That's literally the only um, difference. Well, no, that and the joystick. The Switch. The Switch. 
Switch, no, there was, there was, the Switch I don't know much about. There were teething problems with the Switch, but I think Nintendo took that on board to fix it. And the buttons look like Xbox controllers. <laughs> but who cares? The the buttons. But the lesson here is pretty much don't always just listen to somebody because they're saying something is bad. People said the Nintendo 3DS was terrible. I still have a working one and still play with it occasionally. I have a fucking PSP. The game. <laughs> this came out in 2005 and it still freaking works. 2005. When it originally came out. This is an original PSP, guys. The first one. The very first one that was ever released. A retail price of $200. I still have that sucker, and it still fucking works. You can't see it, but... Yeah, yes they, yes, they can. Oh, I still have one of those, too, a PS2. I still got a PS2. I, I, I only see your logo on the, on, on the live show. I don't see it on any webcam. I, I don't have my webcam on. I have the Skype thing on. No, I mean, on, on the live show, I just see your, your profile picture. Uh, well, the Skype thing is in the corner, but yeah, I still. But people say things don't work. People don't say things don't work like they're supposed to. Most most of the time, they're they're probably lying. But for some people, they get a negative experience. Some people get a positive experience. It all depends on how you take care of things. Like, if uh, if a wire gets kinked in the blue microphone, sure, it can it can mess it up. But all in all, I find it an excellent, an excellent microphone. There is some issues that I don't like about it, but other than that, there it's a good microphone. So don't always listen to others in reviews about things and all that stuff that something is good and something is or something might be bad. Okay, uh, that's pretty much something you need to always take into mind whenever researching. So if someone says something is bad, it isn't always true. That's something you need to always just kind of come. You need to think. Is this person lying just because they don't like this or what? Just take these words into you know consideration. Don't be don't be a follower. Be a leader. Don't follow others, you know, things, you know, don't always follow others' reviews. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Again, do what you want to do. It's up to you. It's your choice. You don't have to listen to me. You just, have a life. You have choices. Yeah, just cho choose what you want to choose. So whether you want to upgrade something, it's totally up to you. But if something like a PC is about, you know that it's like over five years old or ten years old, it's time to upgrade. There's a time when you know you need to upgrade something. If it's like fucking older than shit, yeah, it's time to do something. But if it's new and you still feel like it has many years in it, you don't necessarily have to upgrade. Like that microphone that I had before, it's right here, but it and it still works, but the computer that I was using, Jesus Christ, I swear this thing is going to die any minute. Any not the one I'm on. The one that is behind it, I swear to God, this thing is going to die any time now. I swear, it's going to die. But if you have questions on anything, say them now as I get a drink of water and we wait for Mark to return. Either, either for me or Mark or Skyler, whatever. Mm -hmm. whatever you know. Yeah, on the live show, they always see your, um, your logo, logo picture. <clears throat> Ribbon. No, I'll post a picture. Oh, did I make the screen? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's okay. It's so nice. It's all righty. I forgot to share screen. Whoopsies. Whoopsie doopsies. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize that was actually good. I did not, I knew I was forgetting something. I just knew I was forgetting something. <laughs> okay, there we go. Microphone crash, there you go. 
<laughs> hey, it's not. It's that's nothing compared to what Mark used to do. Dong dong dong. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> I put my microphone right here, but you're still near me. Yeah. Apple Blue, who are you talking to? See, and I'm sitting about. See, that's about a foot. I'd say maybe about a foot and a half away from my microphone, and you can hear me okay, I guess. If you can hear me, you can hear me. But this is for a live stream. This is not for a reading where I'd have to be this close. She said. She goes down the hallway. <laughs> I gotta. Yeah. Oh, my voice is not used to this much work. I wish she saw Apple Bloom in the background. All right. Since, she she uh, saw, since there are no questions, I will move on to the third ethic, which is learning from others is probably the best way to improve. Believe it or not, learning from others is probably your best, and I mean uh, your, yeah, best your best thing that you could possibly do. So, what do you, you're probably asking me, Sparrow, what do you mean by that? Well, let's take, let's say this. If you're heavily inspired by someone, for me, that'd be lost. What if you wanted to, you know, match up to their content? Not copy them, but match up to their level of content and you want to improve. Well, you know how... Do you want to know how I learned that you don't need over fucking 20 tracks of fucking audio for every stinking sound? God damn it. I learned it from Lost. What I did was I watched one of her editing live streams that she has on the Lost Extras. If you haven't watched it and you want to learn how to do some simple editing, go watch them. Trust me, you will thank me dearly. If you are running over like 20 tracks of audio for like every single voice and all that stuff, oh my god, I can't believe I used to do that. That then go watch, yeah, go watch the lost na narrators uh, like editing lost live streams extras. on the lost extras. You will thank me later. But the best way, if you are inspired by somebody, watch and observe their content. Like for you guys, it would oh, probably. Like for you guys, it would probably be me. I'm not. I'm not taking credit for anything. But by just watching me edit, observing, and believe it or not, learning stuff, I'm slowly losing my mind in those. But by watching me and just learning how to do certain stuff, you can easily learn to be a better YouTuber or a better narrator, for that matter. But we're going to get to that in probably just a second. Learning from others is the best way to improve. Like, how can I, like from these two right here, um, Mark and Thomas. I've learned a shit ton of crap from Mark. Like, like what? In that notion, or basically? Um, Not just narration, it, but mas basically. Basically? Well, okay, basically. then. Well, okay then. Mark, you might want to close your door, by the way. Uh, Mark has taught me how to, like, I'm a reactor as well, and you guys know this. Mark has taught me how to do a reaction a lot more better. Like, for a while, how can I... Like, for a while, my reaction style was going down the tube. I sounded more like I was, like, angry and irritated than happy to be watching something which unfortunately I have that kind of a voice stupid me but Mark has taught me to that adding an intro can make your video better adding a joke into a video can make things better and there's a what do you talk about there's a pun in the title of this video how to be a pony tuber But pretty, the, pretty much if you are inspired by someone, but just by watching and observing their content can help you improve. Believe it or not, I, believe it or yeah. not, it works. I actually, when I was doing Night for the Bat, yes. I was thinking of Stephen Fry. Oh, Stephen Fry. <laughs> because he reads the Harry Potter books and 
this one one line is the tone I gave who was exactly like a certain tone in, in one of his readings. See, and lost. Uh, see, yeah. and when I was listening to the last narrator before I even knew who she was and the full extent of her channel, like bloopers and all that stuff. I oh, didn't know how to even make a scary voice. Like, my scary voice would have been, it's dark outside. It's dark outside. You know, that would normally have been my voice. But now, I've learned that just by adding something like, oh, I don't know, a fluency. <laughs> just by, just, just by uh, adding a fluency to your narration can make it sound spooky. Like, it's dark outside. It's dark and outside. Can we reading a, a like a script or something? Don't 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 talk too fast because nah. Yeah, they won't get what you're saying. But the thing yeah. about uh, is that I my narration style came <laughs> very much from Lost, like very much from Lost. Oh, oh, oh dear. And I'm not. And oh. if you guys listen to my narration, you can actually hear the inspiration. By listening uh, to her content yeah. and watching her editing live streams, I have become a much better YouTuber. You can do the same thing by watching my editing live streams where I lose my mind and redness right. ensues. But animated, animated cheese. My voice sounds. My, my, my scary voice, voice is scary. in a German voice. <laughs> is that German voice? Nine 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 nine. German voice? What's this fine Deutsche voice? Sorry. I but, German <clears throat> I was born in Germany. <laughs> but also, back to Mark, what I said about Mark, by just adding an intro to your stuff can make your channel look better. And this is true. By ch the best thing you can do to improve your channel is, is to uh, pretty much change up your content. Me, how I've done it, well, you've seen the new intro for the Dark Readings, and you've seen that I've added uh, credits with spooky music as well, which is, um, uh, is it letters? No. It's, uh, God, a uh, promise from, it's just a little, intro. it's just a little, they look, bloody, don't they? They look like they're they coming like, to life. They look like red eyes and stuff like that. Yeah, they look they're demonic. Bloody, yeah. Hello. Ronnie Four is over here. Duh. <laughs> but improving is the best yeah, way to make your channel me. become more well known and just better. Like my channel is a well known. No, but is it growing to becoming more well known? Yes. Even Mark's channel is not very well known. You know, no, like no. you got your com, you've got your common uh, reactors like Alex Side. Uh, Rarity Dash, Apple Geek, all those people, they're well known. Yeah, uh, is is Sparrow Night 642 my known? Channel, no. <laughs> my channel is more known for bloody Sweetie Bell cutting in. Oh, come on! Yeah, that was a thing. That was a thing that just grew over the, the reactions. Like, <laughs> I start, when I met Mark, I, I reacted with him. Uh, I reacted to content with him when I sent him like a changeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you were still beating up the microphone. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much, yep, just like that. But the thing is, improving your channel helps your channel grow. So, that's pretty much the... That's pretty much the one thing that's going to make your channel grow is by making it better, adding new stuff, stuff that people don't expect. Like the Lost Narrator, back when I first reacted to her, she had a totally different intro. Now she's got this new one. And of course, she gets the ones for like the Month of Macabre, or whatever she called it, what did she call it last year? Hallowed Horse, Lost Narrator's Hallowed Horse, I believe. She does a reading series every year. By the way, that's coming up. Yay! I still got a lot of work to do, but yay! But the final line of this is 
by learning from others, it allows you to share your knowledge with others. By, by just learning that you, by watching someone uh, edit, you can edit better and then you can share that with other people. Like what I'm doing right now. Mark, no time for travel theories. <laughs> So, uh, Act has said, well, we also try to, uh, is try the best to learn on your own as well. As you're editing, you yes. do things. You feel like you're all by yourself and you're like, I need help here. Yeah, there's something, but I learn how, I learn how to use the computer on my own, but it doesn't mean I'm sort of learning. Um, anime cheese? If you're doing a month of macabre thing, uh, a scribbler does this intro. She does a month of macabre intro each year that she allows anybody to use, as long as you give credit to the people who uh, made it. So there you go. There's your free opening. <laughs> like I didn't make that. I didn't make that opening last year all by myself. Fuck no. I mean, scribbler does her ponytails as well. Yes, but oh, the, she's had that intro there's... forever. Yeah, there's one with, with the great powerful Trixie one. What? Oh, with, with Twilight Sparkle. What, the Starlight? Yeah. Starlight every French yeah, one? It looks, it looks no, really well. it's a great, great powerful Trixie. Like, like one of the readings like she was in Chains. What are you talking about? It's, it's like a fan fiction reading. It's always least up around Christmas time. Uh, I don't know what you're I don't talking think about. I've seen that one. The only, the only thing I've seen about uh, Twilight and Trixie on Scribblers was uh, them kissing each other for some reason. Oh, that. Oh, it's on Scribblers, and uh, no, I have never come across one yet. <clears throat> she loves me, Bell. So now, if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask them as I. Please ask. Take another fucking drink of water because my voice is not used to this much abuse. You can ask me questions, you know. I may be new, but you can ask me questions. It doesn't have to be on just the subject. You can ask anything else. Let me say, where am I from? You can ask. Or favorite pony? Possibly about future content. Favorite princess? Me and me and Thomas already know that answer. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes, we do. Oh yes. Oh, it's known as uh, Trixie versus Heartwarming Eve. Oh, that, that. Yeah, that's always released up around Christmas time. Disney Fanatic actually did that one first. Future content. Yeah. Uh. Well, Mark reacted to this one and. Unfortunately, his PC decided to be a jerk, and <laughs> yeah, I lost it. Uh, I've got, I've got two upcoming readings. Uh, one will be out on the twenty second, and it's going to be called. Um, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Uh, what have you done? This one is a pretty interesting fic. Uh, then there's going to be the one that's going to come out on September seventh. That will be called. That will. Be, that is called, um... What's his face? I have to think for a second. To my beloved sister. It is a Celestia and Luna-based one, and holy shit, is it a weird fit. But it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's a what-if fic. And there's a burp. See? I... <laughs> Me and Goody could get I into love, a burping I contest. Me side. and Goody could get a, a me and burp, me and burpy, me, <laughs> me and Gucci could get into a freaking burping contest. That's one thing I'd like to see at BronyCon one of these one of these years. <laughs> Hello, Alice. I have arrived. Oh, she can burp naturally. Uh, so can I. Exactly. So can I. But, oh, yeah, the Lord of Burps has arisen. <laughs> Why am I known as the Lord of Burps? I think Gucci's the one that would have one. Nah. You two should do a contest. Uh, <laughs> if I could get, if I could get with them and maybe try, I could try. 
<laughs> just give me, just give me some Pepsi. And well, actually, I could do it naturally. So, no worries. Uh, see. Uh. <laughs> okay, stop. I can't stay past 550 because lame Xfinity Wi-Fi theft. Goody was overthrown in the revolt of cards against Equestria. <laughs> I only understand this because I've seen this. It's okay. We're not going to be here until 550. Uh, oh, wait. Hang on. We shouldn't be here that long. It's sh so it's about five o'clock where she is, or yeah, she. So, anyways, <sighs> let's move on to ethic number four since my voice has had a chance to recuperate, and this has to do a lot with narration. Exactly what the title of the video says. The fourth ethic: adapting your voice. This is very, very important in narration. Seeing what I mean by adapting your voice is getting into a certain tone that is going to fit your narration. For me, that's simple. Whore. Which is like this. It's very spooky and very scary, very grimy and very darky. So like that. That is pretty much my grimdark voice. So that's the voice that I've adapted to. Did it start out that way? Hell no. It, I, I started out with... It just got the hang of it. I started out sounding uh, horrible. <laughs> because I started out by doing, uh, I think, happier stories, which was not my thing at all, no. <laughs> but, again, it takes time. It takes trying to find what you're good at. That's a that's the thing on YouTube. You need to find what you're good at. And for me, that's narration and reactions. But the thing about adapting your voice is that it adds more to the story's atmosphere. Like if I was a story, I don't want my voice to sound happy and upbeat like this. I want it to sound like this, very spooky, very scary. That makes the story's atmosphere and what the reader is listening to, well, listener, is listening to, it makes you, it makes, it makes them more, I guess, scared. It adds more fear to the aspect of the story. Like, let her in. There's a perfect example. Let her in needed a dark vibe. It needed a dark voice. It was very, very spooky. So I really went full blast into that with my voice. But I had to find, uh, you know, other voices as well, because I decided to try uh, romance. Romance is more a happier voice, but not too happy. While, okay, there's, also, like the, a, there's also the clock voice. But there's also the clop thick voice. This one I rarely ever pull out of my butt, because it's a mixture <laughs> of my, it's a it's a mixture of the dark voice and the romance voice. It sounds like this very caressy against her eardrum. The mare looked at her beloved and watched as he. <laughs> you, 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 get, you, get it it. you get it. You get it. You get it. You get it. That's that's what I that's what I mean. That's what I mean. But adapting your voice to a certain tone. If it's a romance story, it's gonna be somewhat happy, somewhat a little low. If it's a happy story, it's gonna be up upbeat and happy. If it's dark, it's gonna be dark and grim. If it's going if it's you, you get the you get the Jeff. Uh uh, but that's pretty much something you really want to do. You want to adapt your voice so that it sounds, so that bleh, so that it matches the atmosphere of the story. The hardest one that I've ever done. The hardest. Sparrow was just doing a club thick voice into my ear. I need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. 
No, this is Batman. I am an adult Kakarot. That was not Vegeta. But anyways. <laughs> anyways, try again. But pretty much adapting your voice to a story's atmosphere is very important. It adds, it adds something more to narration. And a lot of narrators fail at this. A lot of narrators fail. I can name one, but I won't. But then comes this. Many people think adapting your voice is just going to happen, over, happen overnight. No. It takes time. It takes experience. And it takes patience. And a lot of practice. It's a lot of practice, lots of patience, and takes time to develop. Like, my voice from the time that I actually did Bittersweet Apple Acres to now, I can notice it was different. It's very, very different. It used to sound more higher. Now it sounds deeper. That just comes with me growing up. Seriously. What the? Ah! Batman is sexually harassing me while Vegeta watches and Sparrow records. You bet yourself. And she got to do a Billy Trunk's voice. Oh my god. Trunk voice. Trunk. Nah. Trunk. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do that, you know. I'm just trying to get too much soap and but but pretty much the but pretty much uh, adapting your voice takes time and it takes patience. It takes a lot of practice. Like every day I practice with my voice trying to keep it at like grim dark like sometimes i'll start a reading and i'll realize i'm too high and i'm like that's not the grim dark voice you son of a bitch i was about that what batman sexually harassing anime cheese while vegeta <laughs> watch <laughs> sorry that is helpful advice point of this entire thing is to help people with narration and being a YouTuber. Adapting your voice, very important. It adds emotion, it adds more to the atmosphere. For me, it's dark only, but clap, but even the clap thick voice. Oh, that's a fun voice to do. <laughs> I love doing it, I do love to do it. It's so cool and fun, especially when the sexy scenes happen. <laughs> Ugh, God damn it. Okay, okay, let's keep this rated as, rated nice and clean, please. I was trying to talk over that, sorry. But next come, but it takes time, it takes patience, but now comes the next part that a lot of people miss out on. Emotion. Adding emotion to a to narration is also very impact. It impacts the reader, the listener, a lot. Like, how can I how can I explain adding emotion? Well, let's go back to Reborn. Let's go back to the scenes where uh, she's basically beating the hell out of Rainbow Dash, where she's basically telling Rainbow Dash that she's done, she's finished. You killed my friend. I'm gonna kill the kill you, you motherfucking bitch. Literally. That's <laughs> yeah. That's scenario gone sexual. Yeah, but. If I did not add emotion, here's what it would sound like. I am no god, and neither are you. That's what it would sound like. That's literally what it would sound like. That's what Skulu would sound like, but nope. This is what it means to add emotion to something. When you are, I mean, literally, when I recorded that, guys, I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed off. Not, not, not from anything that had happened, you know, prior. It was just, I'd gotten so into the story that, and this will happen, I'd gotten so into the story, I was pissed. I felt Scootaloo. I felt the character, which is what we'll talk about next. First person. First person is always going to be very hard. So instead of Scootaloo sounding like, I am no god and neither are you, it sounds more like this, I am no god and neither are you, you fucking bitch! You know, like that. That's more along the lines of adding emotion. You want to add emotion, make it sound realistic. You want to make it sound 
you're angry, you're sad, you're pissed. No matter what, emotion, very, very important. Because that's something, especially if you're in first person. First person, if you don't know what that is, strictly from the from the character's point of view. So you have to be that character. That's why first person is the most challenging for me, and why I barely ever do first person stories. First person is so tough, because you have to be that character. But Reborn was written completely in first person. I had to be Scootaloo. I had to express her emotion. I had to show everyone, all the watchers. She hates Rainbow Dash right now. She hates her. She despises her. She hates the Rainbow Factory. She will burn it to the ground. You ha I had to show that. I had to truly show that. But I think the hardest the hardest scenes for me were probably where I had to play the workers who were being killed. Because I suck at sadness. Sadness is something that I'm really working on trying to get better at, but oh my god, it's tough. If anything, that is an emotion that is, that's the hardest emotion you're ever gonna try. It's like fake cries. Especially for me who can't cry worth shit. But I like and I'm pretty sure I sound of a sample. If it's Pinkie Pie. No, 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 no. Oh, go yeah, go ahead. Uh, watch your ears, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it's on open audio. It ain't gonna hurt anybody. Now listen to me, you monster. I promise that Philly are safer, and that's exactly what I plan to do. If you think your friends are gonna prevent me from saving isn't solved from a sure death, you apparently don't know how strong I can be in the face of a wicked beast. That is what we mean. <laughs> Uh, Colts, that that was Coltstein, by the way, I believe, from chapter. Oh boy. Six. That's, that's so that would have been part. One, two. That would have been either part three or part four, I believe. Yeah. yeah. What What's going on right there is Coltstein is yelling in the face of his greatest enemy, which is Annie. He's yelling at her. He's letting her know, you're not going to let me. You're not going to stop me from doing what I'm going to do, bitch. <laughs> And it's not, and, and I mean, geez, it's not that I felt Scootaloo, it's I felt her emotions. I felt the emotions of the character, and it's totally normal. If you are if you get into character enough and you feel that character, that's good. That's what you, somebody who plays also, of... Yeah, even when I, even when I coughed. I was, I yeah, was you, coughed. That, that was kind of funny. But yeah. being any actor, any actor at all, will tell you that they get into character before even doing any lines or anything. They have to get into that character. They have to feel that character. They have to be that character. First person is always the challenging one because especially freaking, oh my god, Reborn was tough. It was tough. There was a mixture of anger, sadness, yada yada yada. Oh, also that um, that Trixie character. Trixie. Uh, oh, you mean I am Shadow. Yeah, and when she was um, she was dying, mm -hmm. and she was crying as well, thinking, "What the fuck, man? You can make me fucking cry as well." Yes, he. No, that wasn't Heath Ledger. You're thinking about that's uh oh, Leto. Who James Leto? I think that was his name. If you're talking about the guy from Suicide Squad, yeah, what no, he no, did that was it's fucked your, up. No, sure, your story, it's your story though. No, I'm ta I'm talking about what's in the chat right now. All right. It wasn't Heath Ledger who did uh, the Joker for Suicide Squad and what he did. Jesus, fucking crazy. Uh, that was like someone else. I can't remember his name. He sent someone... Uh, Jay Leto, was it? Uh, Jay, Jay Leto. Yeah, Jay Leto. Yeah. I think. Jared Leto? I don't know. Starts with a J. Well, yeah, the teeth anyway, for some he did a terrible Joker. But, yeah, I didn't know much about, about Heath Ledger. He could have driven himself crazy. But yeah, he did a great Joker because he got into that character. He, he became yes. the Joker. The thing, the thing with the Heath Ledger Joker, his laughs were amazing. Oh yeah. But he's got, he's got his own logic. That's why it's such an iconic character. That's why you remember the Heath Ledger Joker. That's why you remember the Jack Nicholson Joker. But the only bad thing I find about the Heath Ledger Joker is that he's a terrorist. And he's not supposed to be a terrorist. He's supposed to be a Joker. Not exactly. 
This is good advice for actors. If you're going to act as anything, you have to get into that character. If you go to, like, listen... Not that too much. Like, if you go to Disney Fanatics uh, blooper reels for, um, <clears throat> like, Daughter... Not Daughter of Discord, uh, Bride of Discord, you will hear them getting into character before they even, you know, start to do the lines. Totally normal. Totally what you want to do. Even I do that now. Because I voice uh, something... Oh, Fuck. What's his name? Uh, Discord and Fluttershy's son. Uh, oh my god. Too bad I can't remember a player. A, a, a player? A character I'm playing. Zach. Zachy. Something like that. I don't remember. He. I play him as a older. He's older in this one, but I had to get into that character. I had to get the voice down. That's very important for people who want to be an actor. You have to get into that character. You have to feel that character. You have to be that character. Yeah. That's why first person is always such a pain for me, and I don't want to do first person. It's like that one that I just released, An Angel of Grief. That was all first person. I had to be that guy who was grieving over his um, wife's death and was still searching for her, even though he was just going through the stages of grief. But yes, adding emotion to narration or anything at all helps to impact. That's to add more to that to it just as much as adapting your voice to a certain tone. That's the challenge of narration: adding adding the emotion, adding the adding the right voice tone. You have to put your voice around that kind of a, a kind of a burp scenario. Scenario. Thank you. You have to put yourself in that character's shoes. You have to put yourself into a scenario and be in that story. And sometimes holding the character plus sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, no matter what help, well. and no matter what, you can help yourself by yeah. doing stuff that helps to get you into character. Like you talking to Apple Bloom, talking to an Apple Bloom plush can help. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's what I did with, when I voiced um, Big Man. I uh, I held a, an Applejack next to me and kind of acted like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used uh, I used Applejack in my character to um, help me. Yes, exactly. Become, become that character. No matter what, me if something makes you comfortable, go ahead and do it. But that's as far as that 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 that. that. But adapting your voice very important. It takes time to really adapt your voice. By now, I have it down, but sometimes I even fuck up, and you know. Accidentally, I'm in the wrong tone and don't realize it, and I'm like, "Fuck! I gotta start all over again." Lovely. Yeah. But if anybody has got questions now on this subject or anything, I've got to take a break. I gotta take some, a drink of some water. Maybe get a new cup or a new whatever. Fuck. What the fuck? Don't say much unless you have to go to the bathroom. I'm not there just yet. But I do need a break. Just for a second. See? Voice started cracking. Have a kick oh. He locked himself in a motel room for a month without leaving, and he wrote down the most sadistic thoughts in a book he called The Joker Diary. Also, I think I think let's joke let Leto, so Joker is all right. He just needed more time to show what his Joker was like. He was just a marketing scheme for the movie. Exactly. I do. I agree there. I mean, the Joker only appears for, oh, I don't know, two scenes, two, three yeah. at the most. <laughs> and he, what was it that he sent that, sent that actor? I believe he sent her a ear. Was it a, was it like a, was it a severed ear? I believe it was a severed ear. Apparently he kind of nearly sued the producers because he didn't get enough uh, parts in that film. Yeah, he went a little he went a little over the edge by doing that thing by the, becoming the Joker. <laughs> yeah, which, which I won't say that Leto I won't say that Leto's uh, performance as the Joker was the worst that I've seen. Best. I've seen worse, much worse. There were scenes in the trailer that weren't in the movie at all. Exactly. 
I mean, the nostalgia. I watched Nostalgia Critics' actual, you know, thing on the movie, and kind of all in who you are if you like the movie or not. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think Jack Nicholson has to be the best one because he he, he was just he you know, with, that, with the famous mirror scene. It was and and his and his laughs as well. And, um, just, yeah. for yeah. me, Suicide Squad. Scott. Suicide. Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad was. It was good. It was okay. But it wasn't mind blowing. It was okay. Yeah. I found I did. Best. But to be honest, I found um. I found. Batman versus Superman better. To be honest, and it's a prequel to it. That's what pisses me off. Well, there's going to be a Justice League out coming. Out I know. Out I know. It's going to blow. Watch. It'll blow. I mean, uh, who's the director of those films? Oh, shit. What's his name? Zach. Zach. No. Zach. Zach something. I can't remember his name. He is almost becoming as predictable as Michael Bay. That's pretty, that's, <laughs> that, that's pretty damn bad that's when he's becoming as predictable as Michael Bay. That's bad. That's really bad. Like I didn't even go. Bo I didn't bother going to see the Transformers film because one, I knew it's going to be about. I knew. I I knew Optimus Prime was going to just be like brainwashed. I'm like, why am I wasting my time? Then I watched. I, I, I then I watched watch like the Nostalgia Critics Thomas. thing where he predicted the movie and he predicted it like head on. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that's funny when someone can actually freaking predict a movie before it's even released. That's bad. I, mean, I never watched the Transformers movie because I wasn't a fan of Transformers put together, so um, it looked a bit. Um, yeah, but I like the first movie. I like the second one, but from there on, it just got ridiculously the well, same bullshit played over and over again. Transformers can actually uh, give you electric shocks. Okay, I got some reading to do. I remember watching the movie, and at one point, I went. And I. Is that, I, is that bad, Joe? I. At one point, I though it went from. Be, Begging, I was begging for it to end. I guess what you're trying to say. In my opinion, the Joker laugh needs to start off small and lead off into a big laugh. Exactly. The insane laugh. <laughs> like that. Like that. Like really low to really high. That's how the Joker was portrayed. That's how the Joker was portrayed when he first came out. I mean, seriously. Jack Nicholson did great. Okay. Which is what I'll be improving on for my Joker costume from last year's Halloween. I'm also doing a cut-off face Joker with the stitch. Ay, ay, ay. Michael Bay movie equals 99% bombs, 10 lame care Richters. If you, if you can give Michael Bay some credit, he does know how to show an action scene. Yes, but he overplays it too much. I mean, he overrides the explosion factor too much. I mean, that's literally what 99% of the freaking Transformers films are. <laughs> Did they do the as well? I gotta go to the bathroom, BRB. See, the effects of water, ladies and gentlemen. Is that my joke, I'm Thomas? I don't get it. Transformers. Transformer. You know, like electrical transformer. Those triangular pods. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was trying to think of what the, what they was they were called today, actually. When well, you took the actual transformers, like you, you find them up, you find them at like substations. Yeah. Sorry, guys, for my jokes. I'm I'm like that. And so, sorry if I'm a bit too excited. It's just, you know, happy. I mean, think of that picture I sent you in the chat.
And for me, for me in the voice acting, I can not only do some ponies, I can also do a character on Little Is Pet Shop as well. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, I don't know. Thomas, what do you think of that picture you sent me in the chat? Send me a picture. Oh, we're in, the, in, the, in this chat here. Uh, is it the fan picture? Yeah, I sent a picture after I sent the picture. It's, just, it's, it's the last picture I sent you. Oh, the Clarksdale thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering what that was actually. That is the, that's the app on the on the on the iPad in the story. Um, um, that's the, the icon. Okay, okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's got a bit of the Xbox like thing <laughs> 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 with, with a satellite dish. <laughs> yeah. Not the same sky. <laughs> that's how they whisper up them. Little question. EQD. EQD, yeah. Did that uh, stand for anything or? Little question daily. Question daily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't put that in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been inspired by question daily. All right, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, testosterone. But nothing else, yup. Hello, Cody. <clears throat> Michael Bay logic, intense scene, and add some explosion. I know someone who can do the Joker perfectly. Unfortunately, we aren't on very good terms. Hello, oh, Cody, it's nice. Blah, 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 blah. I can do the mania, apparently. <clears throat> Anyways, on to ethic number five. Working with others. This is the one where you really, 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 really need to listen up because this is something that even I still have problems with. And what I mean by working with others, I mean like working with voice actors, artists, etc. Musicians, anything like that. Well, that's a this is only if you're a director me I would count as a director because I direct these uh, readings pretty much lots would be a director mag would be a director scribbler would be a director yeah but you do some you do, do some voices yourself as well then. yeah rarely yeah barely now as a director you need to have a lot of things you need to have a lot of strength, is what I should say. Now, just like with ethic number one, where I said, or you, bleh, where I said, how do you know you want to be a narrator? Well, it goes with this same exact thing. If you want someone to voice for you, you're never going to know unless you ask. So, if you want someone to voice for you, don't be afraid to ask. The worst they can say is no. So that's probably the best thing you can possibly... Uh... Well, you, you do audition videos now, don't you? Yeah, but rarely ever get any answers. <laughs> and if someone does say no, if someone does say no, they do not want a voice, you got to respect that. However, that leads to... And that's the number one thing that a director needs to know is respect. They need to have respect for the people that they ask, the people that they work with. For me, that's a lot of people. You have to have respect. Respect is probably the number one thing at the top of the list that a director needs to have. Even Mark oh, counts yeah. as a director it's because easy. he makes reactions. <clears throat> so respect now if you are uh, asking a, like if you're going to try and work with a VA who commissions this is completely up to you I ain't gonna go very far into this aspect because commissioned VAs I've never worked with any 
I've worked with some who do commissions, but that's different. The ones who strictly, strictly say you, that you need to pay in order for them to act. That is pretty much up to the person. But there are a lot of things that you need to understand about commission VAs. First of all, if you pay for something, don't go against your word. Don't be a dick and don't just go off on them. Like if you get the lines and you don't pay them, oh, don't do that. That's a that's a douche move and that is a piece that just makes you look like a piece of shit. Especially if it's a famous VA. You saw what can happen. I'm not gonna bring it up, but you saw what can happen if someone messes up. Yeah. So but that not but it not only goes uh, shows that you are not trustworthy but it also show shows others that you have no respect for them you will you will lose respect and you will lose the ability to work with others because the word will get out most commission VAs don't even like there's no commission VAs that are not famous lost is one i believe mag is one i don't know about scribbler i think she might be i don't know it's up to it. I really don't know. Probably is. <clears throat> but just don't go against your word. But it's the same thing. But it's the same way around. If your commissioner does not go through on their word, don't pay him. If you have paid, let them know. Hey, I paid for this. You're going to do it. Wear that or ask for your money back. It pay the top dog. I've never played. I've never worked like commissioned for voice acting because I'm flat broke, and uh, yeah, I have some trusted voice actors. But more on that in a I minute. Know, yeah, some would charge how how long the script is or per word. Yes, that's what I mean. Does blank check voice act? I don't know. Ask him. I don't. <laughs> I really don't know. I think he mainly uh, does reactions. That is totally unknown to me. Something you gotta ask him. I've never been in contact with Blink Check. I just watch the content sometimes. But there's a code. The code is his username, a blank check. Well, he calls him his YouTube channel is Blank Slate. That's the thing about him. His YouTube channel is Blank Slate, yet he calls himself Blank Wait. Check. Isn't that isn't that Fred Flintstone's boss? I don't know. Not, I really don't slate, know. A slate is basically the capable All right. And That's okay. So moving on. So moving on from a commissioned VA comes the next set of voice actors that you take a chance with. You really take a chance with these kinds of people, and I've gotten burned by people like by like this millions of times. The VAs or artists that agree to work with you, but they never get their shit done. This is probably going to be the most where you're going to take a shot in the dark. If you ask someone to voice act for you, or do art for you, whatever, you've got to learn to know when it's time to drop them. If they fail to get their work done. Like, there was a recent little problem on Twitter of one of my she used to be a friend, but and well, she still is a friend, but I'm not gonna bring that up. I'm not gonna bring her name up or anything like that because I don't want I don't want any problems started. So, anyways, here's how you deal with these kinds of people. You don't just go like if they don't get their stuff done for a while, like if they give you like a time limit, like a week or something like that, that they can get it done. If they don't get it done the first time, don't just go and, and yell at them, hey, get your shit done, or I'm dropping you, you know, like that. Be respectful. This is where the respect factor comes into play. You need to be respectful of them and give them a, and give them a chance to, you know, you know, see their side of the story, because some can be busy, some can have problems, you know, yada, yada, yada. I've had this happen to me before. Uh, pretty much, you just got to message them like, you know, hey, how's there, how are things going on? That's what I normally do. I say normally, uh, 
how are things coming along? Is everything okay? You know, stuff like that. I just be respectful. Let them know, you know, hey. So if they answer you, the most I give anybody is about three times. You burn me three times, goodbye. But there's also another thing here. If they don't answer you, drop them. Because if they don't answer you, if they don't answer you, and I'm not saying like immediate, like if they don't answer you immediately, give them about maybe, oh, I don't know, a couple of days to answer you. Give them a certain time standard to actually respond. And <clears throat> if they don't respond, drop them. And don't even tell them that you've dropped them. I've done this multiple times. I've had to do this multiple times. This is where, as a director, you need to grow a backbone. This is where you need to realize that you're going to have issues. Every director has hit this problem. I don't care who it is. They don't, no, nobody has ever had a perfect record of VAs or artists. Like for a pony, back when I was still doing a Pony's Tale, I had one voice actor slash artist who tried to pull, who was supposed to get their lines done four months prior. Four months. That's when I learned it's time to grow a back bump, and I dropped her. So I pretty much have been like that ever since. If you ain't going to get your shit done and you ain't going to answer me, after about the third time, I'm going to just drop you. And if you don't answer me, I'm dropping your ass. Because you don't want people taking up your time when there's somebody else knocking at the door that could be the better voice actor. Which kind of comes to the next thing. If, let's say that you have, like, two auditions. Two auditions for, oh, I don't know, Rainbow Dash. I've had this conflictment before, before multiple times. And they're both excellent. You cannot be afraid to hurt someone's feelings. You can't be afraid to tell someone, you know, you didn't get the part. You've got to learn to stand up. And you've got to tell this person, you didn't get the part, the other person was better. This is just something that comes along, and I still deal with this to this day. So you need to grow a backbone as a director, period. You need to know, you need to be able to tell someone, hey, you didn't get the part. Like, one of the people that is a huge voice actor for me, that has been with me since the beginning, is Vanilla Swirl. You see her name in a lot of my readings. She's my go-to Twilight. Like, sometimes I don't even have to ask her. Like, sometimes I'll put out a voice acting thing because I want to give other people a chance. And she'll email me immediately on Gmail and say, I can do Twilight, pretty much. That's how it goes. Like, almost immediately. Bam, she's right there. This is what leads to the next thing. Basically, after a while, you can... a friend Like, certain voice actors that you have worked with a lot, like for me, that'd be Vanilla Swirl, Lily Leaf, uh, Disney Heart... She's only voiced for me once, but that doesn't mean anything. We're, we're good friends. Uh, there's a lot of people that I've worked with, but of all of them, I have to say Vanilla Swirl and Lily Leaf are probably the most most uh, consistent and the ones that have never burned me at all. I mean, you get to the point where those people don't just become acquaintances anymore. They become your friend. They become very trusted voice actors. I mean, God knows how many how many trusted voice actors lost, Goody, Magpie, all of them got. They've got trusted artists, they've got trusted voice actors, they've got trusted musicians, the whole nine yards. This is the same thing. This is where, as a director, you can make friendships out of just simple voice actors. If they have worked with you long enough and are trustworthy enough, they become your friend. Like, me and Lily, we don't talk much, but we do, we are good friends. We're very good friends. And uh, Vanilla Swirl and I, we, we've been friends since the beginning of uh, A Pony's Tale. She was the one who uh, auditioned for Twilight. So we're going clear back to um, 2015. Was that 2015 or 2016? I can't remember. I believe that was 2015, if I remember correct. That 
we've been friends ever since, and we still talk. We email each other stuff. We ready. We look at each other's content, and we just love to talk. And we're good friends. And she is very reliable. Like she's a really nice person. She's sure she's got maybe an, she's got an accent to her voice, but am I going to judge her on that? No. That's just something that comes with being a director. You have to be able to grow a backbone and just because one well, minute what do, you mean, what do you mean when you, you say she's got an accent on her voice she has an accent she is a f i wouldn't call her dutch to be honest not totally she's she's kind of from the dutch colonies i think that's what she says she's from anyway uh, uh oh no 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 she's from the oh shoot of course you made me think I'm going to jump with me. Oh, fuck. Uh, I can't remember where it is. It's got a weird name. Uh, but she's from a very ruined place. And very, unlo a very uh, injustice. But she's a really nice person. Like, really, really nice. And is probably one of my most trusted VAs. So whenever I need Twilight, I go to her and I ask her. Or she comes to me and asks me. So after a while of being a director and you know working with a lot of VAs, especially certain VAs, you learn that those people are trustworthy and you can become friends with them. So after a while of coming around to VAs, you can become friends, which can lead to bigger things. For me, it's led to a lot of good things. I've been joined. In, I've been added to groups. I have earned friends in those groups. That's where I met Lily. Uh, I came across a video when, my, when I was back. I'm still friends with you know who and uh, uh, he he told me about uh, this place called QVP, which has a lot of excellent voice actors in it. So I messaged the runner of it named Animility, and she uh, messaged me back and just told the only the only requirements to get into it were. Can you take language? And I said, "Have you not heard my stuff?" <laughs> no. How I responded was, "Hell yeah, I, I, I can take, fucking, uh, language, language. like being a smart ass." <laughs> but that was it. That's where I met Lily. That's where I've met Cadet. That's where I've met a lot of people that you've seen voice in my stories. Vanilla Swirl and all them. They came before, way, way before. Disney Heart. She's a sweetheart and. I really do feel bad that I don't add her to certain stuff, but I'm trying to find the right characters for her. I don't want to, I don't want her to get hate or anything like that. I want her to feel comfortable. I want her to voice act a character that can be voice actor. She's also still working on voice acting, and uh, she is. It's kind of a secret thing. It's a secret thing, so that makes it even harder. So that's a really good. So you can make friends just by being a director and for people to trust and not to trust. You've got to learn to grow a backbone. So you have to be able to tell someone yes or no. That's pretty well, much the... Would you, would, you, would you get me into it, like uh, voice roles in your stories? Yeah, you're my go-to Big Mac. Yeah. <laughs> when I have them anyway. But yes, working with others... Big Mac needs for bigger roles, though. Not to say, yep, all, yeah. all the time. Yeah, but, yep. <laughs> but working with others is definitely something you take a chance with. It can go either north or it can go south. And even those who don't, even those who don't, uh, you know, voice act for you. Like, take this, for instance. Has Lost voice for me? No. Has Magpie voice for me? No. Has Scribbler voice acted for me? No. They've stood up for me. That's why we became friends. Not because they were they were in my stuff, but because they were able to. They stood up for me in the time when I needed someone to stand up for me, when I needed help. So yeah, yeah. that's how I came to know Lost, Magpie, Goody, all them. Well, actually, Goody, I ran into in another chat. Uh, I can't remember when it was. I think it was before I. Actually, casted Wooten in uh, that derpy clop fic. 
<laughs> but he's a he's a nice guy too. Random guy, but nice guy. I can't do it. But final uh, final verdict of this. It's an important aspect as a director to be able to drop VAs or artists or whatever when they not when you know that they are not going to do their shit and give others a chance to shine. That's something you got to really really do as a director and you really got to focus on. Other than that, I think that hold on. Oh, and there's one more concept here. Working with others helps not just your content, but it also helps you. Because it helps you can learn a lot from a lot of other people. That's going back to aspect num that's going back to ethic number three. You can pretty much learn from others. Like I've learned from Mark, I've learned from Thomas, I've learned from Lost, I've learned from a lot, a lot of people of how to make my stuff better. So working with others. Uh, how, how did you how did you learn from me? Yeah. There's certain stuff. It's not necessarily in the direction of, you know, what you think it would be, but just to be stronger or something like that. I don't know. Like, yeah. But encouragement. The thing, it, yeah, working with others helps you helps you as much as it helps your content. That's pretty much the long and short of this. You got to learn to grow a backbone. You've got to be, tell the yeses and the noes, and yeah, working with others, even though you don't want to. Which for me, there's there's two types of people. There's the people who do want to work with others. They're willing to go out, talk to anybody. Then there's the lone wolves who uh, pretty much like to work alone. I would fall in the lone wolf wolf category. I would follow. Follow oh my God! I would fall into the lone wolf ca category because I've always worked by myself. But by working with others, now I can see it's better to work with others than to be alone. So, if anybody has questions, please type it in the live chat, and I will try to <coughs> answer them. And I'll take a drink of water because I need one. I'm just, like a, to talk I'm just a sparrow, but for Mark and I as well. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. Mark shy. No, nope, don't be don't be shy at all. And go away, Facebook notification. Oh come on! Fuck off. Sparrow is best to tell some of the ugly truth than a beautiful lie. Oh, Sparrow, it's. In some ways, yes. Sometimes it's better to tell the ugly truth, but only, only in a certain scenario. Only in certain scenarios will that actually work. Like if someone pisses me off to the point of where I'm about ready to just, you know, kill them, that's where I just say, fuck it, goodbye. I need to go back up. But let's see that. Uh, dee, 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 dot. There's a YouTuber who I did art for, and I didn't finish the last one. They asked if I was all right, and at the time, I was sick. He was very respectful and kind, and he told me to take it easy. He was kind. That's a good director. That's someone who should, and I repeat, should. Should. That's how they should respond to you, but only if you are willing. But only if you answer like that, like give them the information that hey, I'm sick, I've been having trouble, you know, like that. And sometimes they can be lying to you, so be 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 able to catch a lie from the truth, which is what I had to catch. And yeah, four months was kind of ridiculous. No, no, de no, bleh. Celestia wasn't two years. At least it wasn't two years. 
do you plan to stream again tomorrow? No, I'm not going to stream again tomorrow. This is just something that I've put together so that I feel like I'm with my friends at BronyCon right now. Because right now, it is very, very quiet. Very, very quiet in a certain group that I am in. Everybody is at BronyCon, so I feel kind of alone. <laughs> I feel uh -huh. like I'm, you know, you just... Get Cody, it, do you get Cody's message? Huh? Cody message? I'm looking at the chat right now. Do you plan answer? You're talking about giving voices to a written story or an animation story, fanfic, etc. Just to recap, that um, I can do a maniac voice as well. No, animation is not my thing. I, I've tried it before, oh, but maniac. No. As in maniac, I can do the maniac voice in Power Ponies. Well, okay then. <laughs> it's fun. I'm currently doing the cover art for Finfic I've offered to do that I haven't started. That's something you need to stop. Procrastination, it's a killer. Uh, I once tried to get a live reader to, to my most recent story, Zero Takers. One was too busy as well. Oh, uh, well, nothing to do about that. I can relate to that big time. I'm sorry about the burps, but yeah, can't burps over here. <laughs> Which is better, telling some okay? Which is better, telling someone a beautiful lie or the ugly truth? My votes for the ugly truth. Truth always should be better over lying. Lying is never a good thing, but it can be good in some certain scenarios. Yes. Marks, do you do streams? Occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, yeah, sometimes I, I find it hard that I'm not sure who's going to join and bloody time zones. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll join you uh, um, live stream, Mark, if you want me to. Yeah, but some of my live streams are like, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, and hey, a new person. How exactly do you draw attention if you're somewhat new? I'm in a... God damn it. <laughs> Water. There we go. Uh, and there's a bird. How exactly do you draw attention if you're somewhat new? I'm an writer. Blah blah blah. I'm an writer in training still. So am I. How to draw attention to yourself? Well, just just take these. Just take this stream into mind. Becoming a famous writer, you have to write a famous story, pretty much. That's the that's the short that's the pretty much strong answer. To become a to become a good writer, you have to write a good story. I mean, I, I had my writing ambition since two thousand and six. So, how to draw attention? Uh, like I said, when you start YouTube, you're starting from the ground up, because. You, yeah, it's like starting a business. It's like starting something. Unless you're in, you know, it, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough thing. You have to have determination. You have to have patience. You have to earn such. You have to make content. It's, it's and also, engagement is the key as well. You need, to yes. spread your, you need to spread the word out. Don't expect people to find you. You have to advertise. Yeah, if you guys are, if you guys are, you know, Larry of that thing like you liking your own video like so, like you actually taking like you actually watching your video and liking it yourself don't feel ashamed about that I do that but I don't do it to you know give myself credit I do it to share it which I'm on Twitter and all that stuff so that helps I share it to Equestria Amino as well For, before anybody asks me if they can be added on Equestrian Amino. Just know the only thing that I post on there is like my videos. That's it. <laughs> and hello, skinny green killer. I recognize your name from uh, 28 Pranks Larry the Aftermath. Hey, you're one of my favorite readers. You might not remember me, though. I'm an older fan. I remember you. 
Is Bronny Con is Bronny Con guys only? Hell no. No. It's no. all it's all boys. It's all yeah, my. God. It's all girls. It's all girls. it's all gen gen genders. Girls. Jesus Christ! Genders, yeah. If I can why, talk why today. Boston scribbler there. I'm that guy. Everybody's why there. Think, why do you think they're there? The shadow, nah, of course not. Oh, of oh, that's an answer. Most people are at BronyCon right now. That's why I'm doing this. Okay, it's for all friends. Any okay? Thank you for answering that. Where is it usually at? Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland. That and the reason why it's the most popular one is because that I guess that's original. I guess that's where it originally started. Like that's where the big. That's why it's more expensive. That's why it's more big for the big names. That makes more sense. But, but that's what that's where the fandom actually started, isn't it? That's yeah. the actual convention it first began. I don't know. I'm not that. I only got two more minutes. First convention, not when how Brony started. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry, Alice. I sorry we get sidetracked. Plus, I'm answering questions that I've missed. You can always come back and watch this and start from where you left. Is it better to do readings on the main... Okay, is it better to do readings on my main channel or keep them on my side channel? Because I have a side channel just for readings. That is all up to you. Do you want to make a, a single channel where <clears throat> you do two things? Would you rather do... Oh my god, let me try this again. Would you rather do two separate channels, or would you rather combine? That's completely up to you. For me, for me, I would put it on the same channel, but that's up to you. Again, that's I your choice. That, yeah. I can talk on but, G Plus tomorrow if anyone is interested. Bye. Okay, Alice. Sorry, sorry about that, but yeah. What if you ask what? What if you identify as an attack helicopter? What? <laughs> Did I miss I something? Uh, I'd say the Chinook. What did I miss? <laughs> did I miss something? I Seriously? Oh, all the Black Hawk, maybe? Black Hawk? That, that's, that's, a, that's a attacking helicopter. Uh, oh. But, the, but then again, the Chinook is more of a cargo helicopter. So. That sounds like a drone. But it does have, like, the, the sudden woof, 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 Hold on. So far away. Hang on. Oh, I need to go get some water. More water. It's cold. It's cold. I should look. Yeah, the one with the double blades. Yeah, she not front, front and back. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what I was saying from Apocalypse Now. <laughs> those those things can be heard from far away. Yeah. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Yeah. And it's even on air shows as well. They even do flips <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what's actually even listening to. Not, I don't, thing is, trying to get exposure for my own fan fiction. No one's, not, I don't get many views. I do get some views, but no one's really commented. I'm not sure if people like it or not. Okay. Let's no, try. Back it's like, it's like what a scribbler. scribbler. Uh, it's kind of sad. Just go for it. Just go for it. Yep. You never know you can do something until you try it. So, okay, I missed something. Why gender is an attack helicopter can go to Bronny 
What? Okay then. Random. All right. The reason is because my cha main channel is for my content about my original series I'm writing. I just didn't want people to mistake my original content for MLP stuff. So yeah, I'll keep the channel separate. All right, I am back with water. I need some water. My throat is my throat is not used to this kind of torture. Thing is, I uh, trouble with, uh, if you if you want to do reactions, no, if you want to do like, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that. We're gonna get to that. No, we'll get to the point. Like, I'm, I'm talking about keeping your, your channels, keeping the channels separate. That's completely up to you. That's know, your choice. The, the only drawback is you cannot make money off that new channel until you get 10,000 subs. Exactly. Or 10,000 10, views. If you're only making money on one channel, it might be best to stay on that channel if you want to make money from that Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Looking like a new sack of the uh, stone, uh, yeah. They can't see my face, but... <laughs> Alright, we're on to the I last... Okay, we are on to the last death deck. Yay. <laughs> my voice is killing me right now. Well, not necessarily. Here's another question. Oh, hang on. Here's another question. When my current story is finished, it's MLP, how would I go about getting a live reader as I can't really afford... How would I go about getting a a live reader as I can't really afford them. So bloody hard to get noticed. Well, he's British. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Cody. You Are you talking about getting a reader for your content? Is that what you're meaning? That's the only thing I can uh, guess out of that out. Or a live reading. I don't know. It's hard to tell with uh, all these typos and all that stuff. <clears throat> I'm not on YouTube for money. That's what my DA commissions are for. Okay. I'm not making money from either channel. That is, once again, it's your choice. Whether you want to monetize or whether you don't want to monetize. Nowadays, the new rule with uh, at least Google AdSense, from what I've heard, is that you need at least 10k views on a, on some video, which for me that was oh, Confessions of an Alicorn Princess. Technically, no, technically, it's the whole channel. The whole channel needs at least 10k views. Um, not from what I heard. Not, not from what I have heard. I'm not British, and by reader, I mean someone to read it from start to end. Um. Reach out. Find someone who does it for free. And it all, it all depends. I mean, some readers, like myself, are grammar Nazis. <laughs> That's exactly the term for it. A grammar Nazi is someone who is very, very, very picky on what they want to read. And the thing about... The thing about it is, like the grammar and all that stuff needs to be perfect. I mean, that's a, that's something for me, or at least tolerable. That's just something for me. That's a thing that I really, really look into reading for. Like cupcakes and all that stuff, that they had issues. Cupcakes and Rainbow Factory both had uh, grammar issues. Like Rainbow Factory, big time. No commas, no freaking periods. I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me right now? No apostrophes either. But the best thing, me. the best thing that you can do to get uh, someone to read something is you have to do, you just have to reach out and ask. That's uh, pretty much the best way that I can say say that. Uh, the best way is to just reach out and try. Try. Got Child Buff in here. Just do it. God damn it. Huh? Um, YouTube says, uh, 
YouTube only channels with 10k views can make money off ads. Yeah. It's not. It's not on just on one video. It's a whole channel combined. Hmm. When I did it, it said it, that you need at least 10k on a video, not your channel. No, not, not, not I'm sure there's a certain not. amount on your on your channel as well. But I would have, I would imagine about 10k. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So, Cody, I really don't know how to. Uh, I really don't know how to tell you anything else, but you just got to reach out. You got to try it. Just try it. Exactly what I said back in ethic number one. Number one. Which you weren't here for, but that's okay. So, anyways, enough questions. On to the last ethic, which is probably the most simple. Thank you, Nostalgia Critic. Which is the thought, which is keeping your reputation on YouTube positive as a narrator or a YouTuber. I think this is going to be probably the most important one, seeing that's where Mark and I sit. Thomas is still growing, but he's getting up there. He's really getting close to that 100 sub mark, which is good. I'm just a seed. <laughs> that's, that's no, you're I'm... not. You're not a seed. Once you get to 100, it's gonna it's gonna escalate pretty fast. Trust me. Now, what do you, what do I mean by keeping your reputation positive? Pause, suck a bitch. <laughs> keeping your <laughs> reputation positive. Well, what I mean by that is keeping a stable YouTube channel and keeping yourself not from being not from being like a certain someone that I know. I'm not gonna bring it up. The first thing you need to do, no matter what is to respect your subscribers. Without your subscribers, you would be nowhere. Yeah. Your subscribers are the ones that get you to where you want to go, or fuck me, are the ones that get you where you have gotten, and you have to respect them for that. I mean, some can be jerks sometimes, some can be jerks, but pretty much respect your subs. Because they're the people who have gotten you as far as you've gotten. Me, I heavily respect all my subscribers because you guys have stood with me through the good, the bad. Yeah. yeah. Everything you guys have stood up for me. And that's why in the 1K subscribers uh, special thing, that's why I put that I wanted it to be about you guys because I didn't want to make it about me. I wanted to make it about you guys. You're, you're the ones who got me to 1K, well, 1,260 at the moment, that I know of. So, pretty much, that's the thing with respecting yourselves. Next up, ignoring haters. Every YouTube channel gets hate, spam, whatever. They get it. And this is probably one of the biggest struggles that people have when it's probably the most simple thing to get rid of. Haters are gonna come on your channel. They're gonna call you you're gonna they're gonna call you every name in the book. They're gonna make you look try to look like a piece of shit. Best thing you can do, go to where you um pretty much can uh, filter your comments, ignore it, delete it. That's probably the best thing against a hater. And how to, you know, spot a spam thing. There's one coming up. There's one around lately that is an Instagram one. If you get that, yeah. delete it immediately. It's a spam. If they give you like Instagram links. Oh, yes. Yeah. That is a big thing right now. I, I wanted I've, to make I've a. I've had them. I've had like two. Yeah. I've, I've, I get them every time I post a fucking new video. So ignore haters. Haters are going to come, they're going to be there. Ignore them. Delete their comments. Now, there is a difference between hate and constructive criticism. People people take uh, constructive criticism for hate. It's something that looks like hate, but it's it's mistaken. It's mistaken as hate when it's not. 
Constructive criticism is probably the best thing you can get for your YouTube channel. If someone comes on and says that something could have been any better here, something could have been better there, you need to improve on something. Like my main one was get a better microphone, get a better get better mic quality, take out the filtering in your in your voice or your your voice your uh, your your microphone. That was a big thing with mine. So I upgraded. But constructive criticism, when someone gives you advice that can help you, don't take it. Don't or don't don't just you know put it aside and delete it. Take it. Listen to them. They're trying to help you. They're not trying to hate on you. They're trying to help you. Like so like here's an example. Uh how did this happen? Oh yeah. I came across one of Webcake's co comments, things on uh, Twitter, and I told her that I drink coffee while I am, you know, uh, recording stuff. She said, no, don't drink coffee. Caffeine's bad. Drink water, which is why I'm drinking water. And let me tell you what, it's, ha it's helping. It's really helping to keep my voice from dying. Especially warm water because it so uh, cleans up the Yes, that works also for anybody who is a vocalist. Anybody who does like music and sings, hot water, not not boiling hot to where it's gonna burn your throat. Yeah, don't, don't warm, that, warm. Like if you ever watch a concert and you see like a vocalist go over and grab like a bottle of water, that's what they're doing. They're refreshing their vocal cords, especially screamos. So back suddenly, the grammar. The reason my grammar is off be, is because I'm viewing this from my tablet, and I just block haters. Smart move, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. But constructive cri criticism, yeah, definitely something that can help you. So if you see it, take it, use it. And now on to what Mark was talking about earlier. Doing more than one topic on your channel. If you want to do more than one topic on your channel, do it. If you want to do it on your channel or a separate channel, do it. Because here's the thing, and a lot of people think that the subscribers are the people who control them. No. Who created the channel? You did. Who posts the content? You do. Who makes the content? You do. Who does everything on the channel? You do. It's your choice. If you want to do more than one topic and a subscriber is saying, quit doing this bullshit, man, it's stupid, ignore them. To be honest, that wouldn't be even a loyal subscriber, to be honest. That'd be a jerk. So if you want to do more than one topic on your channel, like what I do, I do readings and I do reactions and even music. If you want to do more than one topic on your channel, go ahead, do it. Don't let others stop you. Do what you want to do, not what you, not what others want you to do. That the is. Thing is the new, new thing that you did now. That's pretty much what you want to do. Or you can make another, or you can make a separate channel, and do it as secondary content. But like I said from the beginning, it's up to you. It's your choice. You can create more. You can do more than one topic on your channel, or you can just do one topic and put it on another channel. It's up to you. But altogether, keeping a reputation, a positive te reputation on YouTube, very, very important. This is what doesn't lead to copyright strikes. It's not what leads to copyright. It's not what leads to people hating you. It's not what leads to people. You know. Yeah, pretty much all all that stuff. All the bad stuff that's going to make you look like a jerk. And I believe I have people who don't like me after what happened, but I don't give a fuck. That's pretty much what I say to anybody who hates me. Cool. You hate me? Whatever. I don't care. But pretty much the best way to keep a positive reputation, respect your subs, ignore the haters, take advice from the constructive criticism people will give you, and do what you want. Don't let others control you. You want to do one more. You want to do more than one topic? Put it on a separate channel. It's your choice. 
all your choice. So that pretty much concludes uh, ethic number six, which was keeping your reputation positive. Got any questions? Let me know. Because that is the end of uh, pretty I much this topic. And also, I think it's switch each to your subs when they actually comment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If we don't speak to them, then you then you think that don't no, that, 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 that you don't care to be honest. Yeah, don't Reach out to your subs, people. pretty much, is what yeah. Mark means. Yeah. It's like it's like me right now in a live stream. I'm talking to you guys because I want to talk to you. I want to uh, reach out to you guys. I can't go to BronyCon, so let's make a live stream that kind of is like it's just like a panel only in a live stream. And me yeah. and Mark can't go to BronyCon either because we live in a different country and it costs even more to get into Baltimore. Yes. So. And this is, <laughs> these are my guests. A at plus the, accommodation. And these would be my guests at the table. Pretty much. Yeah. So I'll look at the, I'll look at the chat. The only problem when you block someone on YouTube that that can still comment, they can still comment on your videos, but when they do comment, you will not be able to see it, but others can. Yeah, that can get annoying. It can. And I have a channel for Let's Plays and another for everything else. Some people like to have secondary channels. Lost has one for uh, extra content that doesn't make it into the main channel, which is her Lost Lost Narrator channel. The it's one like in, a behind, the, behind the scenes thing, isn't it? Yeah, the Lost Extra is just behind the scenes, pretty much. I made a second channel once, but I decided to just abandon it because it still exists. It still exists, but I don't really cared it for a second channel if I'm gonna make if I'm gonna be on YouTube and I want to be successful I'm gonna go with one channel one channel yeah <clears throat> be like Jake Paul dab on dab on damn haters I hate myself for even making that joke <laughs> first hater I got I asked them if I was famous because I know I had a <laughs> Uh, okay, that's actually a good way to come back at a hater. Hey, am I famous now? I got haters. <laughs> that just don't seem right. That just don't sound right. But pretty much all you got to do is just kind of hold a good reputation. And if you guys have any any questions, and I mean even outside of this live stream, you guys can ask me on Twitter. You can ask me on uh, email. You can ask me via YouTube messaging. Facebook. I'll put my I'll put the tw my Twitter uh, thing in the description, so you guys can go follow me on Twitter. This is not a video, so so you guys have to go follow me on follow me on Twitter. You don't have to follow me on Twitter. It's just. That's where I post most of my updates. If you guys want more updates, go to Twitter. That's where I do most of my updates. That's where you're going to probably find more behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> You'll get to see like, you know, thumbnails for upcoming readings and all that stuff. I still got two to make, god damn it. And again, in my in my videos, I do I do pony stuff as well. Yes, Thomas is growing. Thomas is growing. He is a he's a vlog. He's, he's like Mark. He's a vlogger who like relates adds like MLP blah, 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 MLP relation to his vlogs. Like adds little funny stuff in there. He's a vlogger right now. But which one of also, you owns this channel? Me. Also, I put the green screen ponies. If I that's what I mean. When, yeah. Yeah, Mark. Mark helps me with that. that and, ones, yeah. Hello, sweet belle, and I include sweet belle sometimes. Yeah. That's ridiculous and I, and sometimes. I, and I also do uh, updates as well, which, for example, uh, I did a, a build-up video video for season seven. Uh, I did a halftime video for season seven. And coming soon will be 
you know, the reaction to season okay. seven. What, what also, do I think of it? Thomas, do you eat your do you eat your two chunks for Jess? <laughs> tea logs? Uh, possibly. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I have them in categories. I have the my own oh, tea one. tea logs, tea tea chunks, tea and uh, most recently tea extras, tea log extras. I have to say if you get outtakes, keep them. Keep well, them. I'm, I'm keep them. Video soon, so. Yeah. How, yeah. If, you, if you make a blueprint in your, if you're, when you're reading, keep them because it's <laughs> like my outtakes. It's fine. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. It, 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 I'm it, reacting it, to season seven too. Shut the, shut the car on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's better to talk in a dark room all day rather than waiting for that car to move his fucking ass. <laughs> yeah, I agree with, I agree with Sparrow here. I'm, I think this was definitely better than season two. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that blooper. Can you talk like anything else? That is so fun. Oh. But. Everyone in three, two, one. What's the best season seven episode thus far? Uh, a perfect uh, pair. A perfect pair. Perfect, perfect pair. Um, and it has uh, aired, so we Brent, can say spoilers. Brent of Lydens. Brent of Lydens as well. A perfect pair. I don't. I don't, I really I don't think any other. Episode. I seriously don't think any other episode is going to be the number one spot this year. <laughs> I don't. But, uh, but to me, I don't want to have a favorite episode. Of, but uh, the perfect out of the of season, season, I mean, just out of the season. That's out stuff. Yeah. Well, for me, season seven, episode thirteen, best episode of the series. And here's the reason hi. why. Because, hi, hello, Shed Twilight lover. <clears throat> here's the reason why. Because it went into areas that I never saw Hasbro ever going into. There's two morals in this episode. Love lasts forever, duh. And uh, it's just romantic. No. Don't let something as stupid as no. anger or a feud get in the way of something that you're gonna regret missing later on in life. Yeah, just like grandpa did. Yep. Exactly. And be and but the most compelling part of that entire episode that I have to say was probably when she was when Parabyr was forced to choose her fam the family she was born into or the family she was wedded into. Yeah, yeah. That was the most iconic part. Why do you have the purple ribbon as an icon? I've been wondering that. A purple ribbon represents epilepsy. Uh, yeah. The pur the purple pur ribbon represents epilepsy, and I and I support uh, my thing, not in a good way, but you know uh, the fight against it. I, I have it myself, so. Yep. Um. The re really, um, if I see a really good episode on the season, I have like an award ceremony in a way. Like the Golden Applejack for one thing. I gave her that one. Yeah. Without that, doubt. That, that has been going on for, I don't know, since 2014, I guess. Well, well, well no, actually, 2015. Um, <laughs> at the end of the season, oh, God. At the end of the season I, give, I give, um... What is your favorite pony of the main six and background? Main six, Rainbow Dash, background, Derpy. For me, Rainbow, for me, Rainbow Dash of the main six, my best princess, Princess Luna. Luna. Um, I don't know my favorite background pony, but uh, I do. At the at the end of the season, I, I give an award, the best um, pony of the year award. Which is won by Coco Camel, uh, Countess Coloratora, Fluttershy, and who knows who will win this year. Best pony right. Best background pony right here. Best, best background pony. Puppy. 
Hello, 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 hello. That's why you guys can't see me on face cam because I've got it going through Skype right now. Yeah, Duppy. Oh boy. Now, best background pony is background pony 3ZZC49ERB3 dash dash EEZ3. 3Z, 3ZC49 Herb is 3. Is there any other franchises that you like besides MLP? Just wondering. For me, uh, I like the, I like, uh, I like the show The Strain. It counts as a franchise, I guess. It's a show. It's a fandom. So I love the strain. Uh, let's see franchises uh, outside of my old pony. Let's see. Uh, I, I like uh, Littlest Pet Shop. So it ended this year. It's well, all right. Last, year. It, it, last year, actually. That's an okay one for me. You got Alvin and the Chipmunks. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, Alvin and the yes. Chipmunks. Yes. Alvin and the they Chipmunks. I'm a fan of that. I love the fourth movie. Ouch. Uh, Let's see what else. Uh, Tom and Jerry, Curse Carly Dog, all the classic Cartoon Network cartoons that were back on in the day. Animaniacs, Animaniacs, Science and Adventures, Rugrats, Powerpuff Girls. Yas, 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 yas. Yu Gi Oh! I'm a Yu Gi Oh! fan of every one of them except GX. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball was funnier to tell. What does the fuck say? It doesn't say anything, apart from gibberish. Oh my god. What does the fuck say? I did like uh, Fairly Our Parents for a short time. That one was okay for a while, then it just got stupid. Same thing with... It's, the, same, it's the same thing with Spongebob Squarepants. Spongebob was good. Yeah. So yeah. Spongebob yeah. was good for like the first good. three seasons. Wow. First three seasons, yeah, yeah. then it sh yeah. then I just pfft, felt a flat, stupid. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It, it was great the first time it was on, but until the show got more popular, it got stupid. It's like it's like The Simpsons. The Simpsons were amazing back in the day. Hey and Arnold. So popular. Hey that Arnold was, was one I was never really into. Watch Tails reacts to what does the fox say? I've probably seen it. I don't want to see it. Do he will say. What so the beep? It's a stupid song, though. Yeah, kind of like Gangnam Style. It's a stupid song, but <laughs> boy, did it go viral. <laughs> yeah, it's a stupid song, but it's a good song. Whoop a Gangnam Style. Hey, sexy lady. Whoop. Whoop, 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 a Gundam style. Gundam style. I was trying to think. Um, uh, and now that we are a song, a song that suits Spitfire. Huh? Um, it, it, it's a, it's a. Wow, we're it's just, a, it's, we're just randomly talking now. <laughs> it's a Chai, it's a Chai song. Chinese. Um, no, no. You know, like Gangnam, Gangnam Style. The guy did Gangnam Style. Oh, Sai. Yeah. Every, uh, every... Bleh. Every... Ever, make you sweat. Every, sweat. It's every played... Call of... Call of fuck me. Well, that, that says that ever played that. Call of Duty's... Zo duties? <laughs> Duty! <laughs> zombies, or ever <laughs> seen gameplay of it? Oh, yes, I've played that before and watched multiple gameplays. Yeah, the stupid zombies always scared me. Really? Yes, spooked me every time. Do you, do you like horror? See, doesn't that does that show you a little bit more of what franchises I'm into? <laughs> that little notification. <laughs> Insane Dragon Ball Super Awakening Starter Deck and Galactic Battle Box Opening Special Rare. <laughs> Ow. But, yeah, we're just kind of in the stage of just randomly talking at the end of the, the panel and all that stuff. We're just at that stage right now. <clears throat> yeah.
You guys can ask. Could do some talking. You guys can do it. Black. You guys can <laughs> ask any you know questions like that. I don't care. Go ahead, ask. I don't care. Is that talking? Is that talking? Yeah. Not coughing. Nothing. If you're gonna start a YouTube channel, have at least one social media network as well. What now? No, where you're starting a YouTube channel. A one you, social media network. Have at least one social media network that people can get and actually talk to you. Yes. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Which, which for me at the time was, I think, fan fiction. <laughs> yeah. And Facebook. And, and not maybe even use fan fiction. Are there any good MLP games in RPG Maker? I'm trying to make one, but writing the story takes a long time. Anyone here played Pink Amina or Unicorn Training from Google Play? The latter is hard. Nope, I've never heard of, RP no. of RPG Maker nor uh, Pink Mina Unicorn Training. There is actually a website you can actually make an RPG that's a search. It's called um, Ponytown. Um, <laughs> and that oh, is a trial. Thing about RPG making sometimes you need coding. Sometimes coding can be expensive. Yeah, and don't, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about medicine called coding. Don't break don't break your budget. Things like Unity as well. <sighs> your favorite your favorite My Little Pony crossovers. Dragon Ball Z. You did, you did react to one. No, the first ever video for one of your, one of your first. That wasn't a crossover. That was more a meets thing. No, that, that was Jurassic no, Park that you're thinking about. Jurassic Park. That is still a crossover. That's still a crossover. My favorite MLP crossover. Uh, season four finale. <laughs> Dragon <laughs> Ball Z. God damn. With my school and spot, a spider man. Uh, I actually did a speed paint of it on my channel. That's how much I like it. Uh, any other crossovers that I like? Um, I not really <laughs> anything. Oh, well, from some of the fan animations that I've seen, uh, there's some pretty good ones of uh, like Star Wars, Star Trek, like that kind of stuff. That one that Mark reacted to lately. Uh, it was like a Star Trek type deal. Celestia is missing, and very well done animation too. I can't remember who who actually did the the fuck. Yeah. Sunset. Sunset. Oh. Yeah, just in case nobody knows. Thomas don't like EG. I keep saying the name wrong. Uh, sunset shimmer. 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 Stop! 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 Sparrow you, sun, Sparrow you, sunset shimmer on Thomas Metham. It is very ah. effective. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Pokemon joke out of this. Uh, Sunset Shimmer. Or Starlight. <laughs> not a good That's better. Starlight that, Shimmer? That, 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 that Thank you. Sunset Shimmer. <laughs> Oh god, now the chat is going to go nuts on your ass. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Megan, about Chi about Chi Sandwich, oh. did you know that's not his real name? Rewatch that episode, he's a runaway child. Uh I don't think we that's don't, I, we don't, I don't know that's talent. That doesn't feel talent to me. I don't know. It's been forever since I've seen that that freaking episode. What is what is what is his real name? Maybe it's not cheese sandwich. God, keep the bird, bird, bird. Sunset shimmer. Sunset shimmer. Sunset shimmer. Sunset shimmer. Sunset shimmer. Sunset shimmer. 
it was Weird Al, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Weird Al Yankovic. That's, that's, that's the VA. That's Where did my OC that. come from? Okay, good question. Uh, my my pony OC has an interesting backstory. Uh, if you want to know the full story, go watch uh, the t the Legend of Inky Hearts. It's a it's a Month of Macabre reading last year. <clears throat> the colors of his mane and his body represent his past. Black and white, or not black and white. Fuck, black and gray, like dark and gloomy. The colors of his mane and you know body represent that his past is not one of happiness. It is dark. It is grim. His cutie mark is a golden quill with a black heart. The black heart means he has a dark heart. His heart is very dark, very complicated. But the golden quill represents his talent in writing. So he has issues. He, ha he has telekinesis and he has a uh, Telepathy. He has the ability to read minds and has the ability of te te telekinesis, well, which is able to well, grab things with your mind, if you've ever seen Matilda. Thank you. Yeah, so, Matilda. but Matilda. the main thing about him is if he gets too angry, he turns into a monster. So he has, a, he has an ugly side to himself that can turn pretty nasty. That, that's the hope, though. That's, that's a reference. So he is, he may be, he may look like an earth pony that is harmless, but literally he's dangerous. If you piss him I'm off, watch out. Boy. Here's like piece of his story. Where he discovered his, his, you know, angry side his, was when he was, you know, considered dangerous. Like, like back in those Salem days of the, the witch trials. Pretty much like that. He was considered a witch. And they came to take him away, but the mother fought. Freaking police officer, or whatever, um, royal guard, freaking rapes his mother and kills her. So what does he do? He goes full telekinesis on their bums, shuts every door, locks every door, and kills them. He also has the ability to bring his works to life. That's kind of spooky. He may look nice and happy, but he is me. And he was born with his cutie mark, so that was one of the things that made him weird. He was weird because he was born with his cutie mark. It's like but we did not know his name, though, before he got his mark. Inky, Inky Hearts. No, I'm, I'm talking about Anthony Sandwich. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, the pony that tried to kick Pinky out of Ponyville. I don't know. It, it, it's been forever since I've seen that episode. In Jesus episode, we saw him as a kid walking sadly from home with that stick slash picnic basket thing, yeah, but, which likely well, held food. Sometimes we don't know if that's always been how we don't fall with. Sometimes the name of the, of the character represents uh, future mark. My OC's backstory wasn't hard to come up with because I based it off of myself. I've had a lot of challenges, as you guys know. Bullying, being different from others, having a disability. But, yeah. Yeah. And Mrs. Kate York, though, as well. Well, before she became Mrs. Kate, yeah. Yeah. Siobhan Swirl. Siobhan Swirl. Wow. Yeah. So she'll be Siobhan, Siobhan uh, Kate, wouldn't she? Because Kate Kate is like the marriage name. Yeah. And Swirl yeah. is, the, is the maiden name. Siobhan Cake. Oh, wow, that's hard to say. Siobhan Cake. Siobhan Cake. Siobhan Cake. Siobhan. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that Goody blooper where he's trying to say sheepish smile. Which okay. I can't even say that fast. Sheepish smile. Because it gets in the way of the M in smile. Sheepish smile. 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 Sheepish smile. Sheepish smile. You have to pause. That's just smile. that's just the hard thing is you do need to pause in order for that to 
work. Sheepish smile. Any more questions? Or... Well, how long have we been going for? About two hours? Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> You're only close to two hours. Excuse me, you're specialist. You started about one hour and 55 minutes ago. Oh, wow. So, uh, Zoe Trent, my favorite passing little pet shop. Thank you. Where am I going, Kara? I don't know. Do you think, do we think we will ever see Scooter's family? I don't know. That I don't know for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 th I think she'll be adopted by Wendy Whistle. I don't think so, seeing we've already seen she's been kind of, sort of adopted by Rainbow Dash. So that is her yeah. family. But she, she does have parents, though. Yeah, no, we don't bring up that Legend of Zelda TV show, Sparrow. <laughs> I just saw it in, I saw it in a, a Nostalgia Critic video. That's where I learned that from. Well, excuse me, princess. Excuse me, you specialist. <laughs> well, then. That's what Zoe says before, uh, before a uh, Well, uh, excuse me, you specialist. Well, guys, I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna close this off. Hopefully, you guys learned a few a few things from this, because this was designed to help you guys. And I hope that you are all having a great day and have learned something. Whether it's out of the total randomness of this, I don't know, <laughs> or the lesson that it was intended to give. So please, so if you want, so oh my god. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed this and. Take care until next time, and happy horse. See ya. Bye.